out there and actually teach some other people about it. Let's start out with this. Remember how I told you last night if you were here, I'm going to give you this. This is the simple thing. We don't cure, prevent, or treat anything. We provide the body what it needs, when it needs, so it can do exactly what it was designed to do, which is take care of itself. Why do we say that every single time? It's not just because we have testimonials and people have gotten great results, uh, because they have. The reason why we say this is because our products do not cure anything. They do not treat anything. It's amazing what the body can do when it has the proper nutrition to take care of itself. The problem is with our food supply the way that it is in this country, we simply get a lot of bad things into our system. I mean, if you consider we have 57 ingredients in our processed food that the human body does not even recognize as a food source, that's kind of a scary thing. You have 36 food items in our country that are not allowed in any other industrialized country in the world. Did you ever catch that? 36 things on the shelves that you're buying. 70% of the foods that you're buying are genetically modified. Here's the best part about genetically modified foods. Does anybody know what a genetically modified organism does to the body? Guess what? Neither do scientists. But we'll figure it out in about 15 or 20 years. We hope everything was okay. All right, so we're gonna go through a few things. First, I wanna start with something. Uh, you know, I wanna make sure everyone understands that when I'm talking to you, I'm not talking at you, I'm talking with you. And the reason why I say that is because I was 307 pounds. I was big. Uh, in fact, this jacket is still from, you know, I've seen a picture of me and Daffy Duck, and I, the, the jack was out, and I was like, man, make me look like a huge man. Uh, that right there was the picture that changed my life. Because you know what? It took me 10 years to get there. I was at 8% body fat and a college athlete. And then I went to law school and did nothing because I got tired of being told what to do every day. Seven years into the practice, did nothing. Working 20 hours a day, not eating right, sitting at a desk all day. And I got home from Disney World with my daughter and my son and saw this picture and I was like, who is that? Because I was actually bigger than Goofy. What's interesting is I looked in the mirror every single day and never saw that. It took a picture to wake me up. And then I spent the next six and a half years trying to figure out how to lose it. Let me let that set in, six and a half years. I've got two bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a law degree. Pretty well educated, but guess what? I didn't know what I was doing. Because I tried every fad, every diet, every pill, under the fin fin, thank God. I say that every time because fin fin actually kill people. And what amazes me is this, we are still in this country waiting for pharmacology to come up with a solution so we can do what we want to do and continue eating the way that we eat, but we can just take a pill and make everything fine. Everyone know what I'm talking about? You don't watch TV at like one and two o'clock in the morning. There's all kinds of infomercials about this, that, or the other, that you just take this and you can do whatever you want. You can still lose weight. Here's the secret. No, you can't. It's actually going to change. And it's going to require a change. And the whole thing about ID Life is this. We do not focus on the 40 inches around your waist. We focus on the six inches between your ears. We are creatures of habit. If we change the way you think, we will definitely change the way you look. But you have to start with education. So. Let's go into Nutrition 101. Now these are some did you knows or do you think you knows. So let's start with this one. A calorie is a calorie. Anyone ever hear that one before? Oh, a calorie is a calorie. I'm going to count 1,800 calories. If I get to 1,800 calories, I can stop. I know I'm done for the day. And that's all good, right? Exactly. Here's the problem. You give me a Hershey's bar, it's roughly 400 calories. You give me a, a six ounce steak, it's about 400 calories. Guess what? They're both 400. You will lose weight if you keep it at the 1800, but guess what's going on internally? All kinds of nasty things with regard to your diabetes and everything else with, that you're actually going towards. And why do I say diabetes? Because by 2050, if we don't change what we're doing in this country, 90, uh, one in three of us will have diabetes. By 2050, one in three will have diabetes. Here's the worst part about diabetes. You gain, okay, or you lose, depending on the way you want to look at it, as you age, one and a half years for every year that you have it. So for every year you have diabetes, you lose a half a year of your life. Type 2 diabetes or weight onset diabetes can actually be reversed. Guess what? It can't be reversed with a pill. It can't be reversed with a supplement, but it can be reversed with a diet and exercise. You can actually do something about it. But guess what? You have to attack it early. If you let it set too long, guess what? You may have done too much damage to actually reverse it. So it's one of those things you have to actually work towards. Now, so a calorie is not a calorie. So every time I hear this, in fact, the last time I heard this, I was actually on a stage in Little Rock, Arkansas with the head of human resources for Walmart and some other very uh, influential people. I was the corporate wellness expert on the stage. This is hilarious. We started corporate wellness in October of last year. I mean, not even a year in, and I'm the corporate wellness expert that they brought in, which I still think is hilarious. 
All that means is I actually can talk on a stage and talk intelligently about what the issue is and, and everyone else is afraid to challenge me, so imagine that. So I, I become the expert. But I actually, heard, I actually heard a dietitian say this on stage. Me being who I am, I decided to get up and challenge her. And I used the Hershey bar steak example and she immediately sat down. So don't listen to this. Okay, I talk to dietitians and nutritionists all the time. I absolutely love them, and the reason why I do is because they expect me to always disagree with them. But in reality, I actually do agree with them. If you could get all of your nutrition from food alone, by all means do it, as much as you can do it. That is exactly what we try to teach you. In fact, if you look at your report, the thing that's through the assessment, that's exactly what it tells you to do. Change your eating habits so you get more of your nutrition from your meals. It's a novel concept, right? So I don't disagree with the nutritionist and dietitian of the world, I actually agree, but said, look, food supply doesn't allow us the opportunity to get everything that we need. We're gonna have nutritional gaps, and that's why we're sitting here. And anyone who says that, well, no, you should just be able to get it all from your food alone, uh, we can go down a different path and have a long conversation, but that's not what we're here today. How about this one, eight glasses of water a day. Anybody know where that comes from? Guess what, neither does anybody else, because there's no <laughs> science to support it. 1945, a nutritionist came up with the idea that we're going to drink two liters of water a day because it sounded like a great idea. Somebody then converted two liters to eight glasses, and we've known that ever since we were a little bit eight glasses of water a day. There's no scientific proof of that because it depends on each one of you and what you do in your life. If you work outside, guess what? Eight glasses isn't close enough, especially if you live in Texas the last few weeks. <laughs> or you walked in San Antonio outside the last couple of days when the humidity was as high as the heat. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I mean, I've walked like half a block and thought I'd take a shower. It's nuts. Uh, but in reality, here's the one thing you need to remember. If you, if you work out a lot, this is, this is a simple formula that you should always remember. Because, you know, this is something that most people forget and they don't think about. If you're going to go work out, the best thing you can do right before you work out is weigh yourself. Before you work out, weigh yourself. As soon as you finish your workout, weigh yourself again. Because guess what? You have lost weight, but it's not weight. It's not fat. You've lost water. You need to replenish that water, and it's a 1.5 times whatever pound you lost. So in other words, you need to drink 24 ounces for every pound that you lost in that workout. 16 ounces is a pound, 24 is a pound and a half. You need to replace 24 ounces for every pound you lost. Why? Because guess what? Half of that, you're going to actually urinate out. It's going to leave your body. You need to replenish your hydration, but guess what? You also need to replenish those electrolytes, hence why we have a hydrated product. Okay, so it's not just water. It's also electrolytes at the same time. But eight glasses of water, myth. You gotta figure out what your activity is and what you can do. In fact, one of the questions I get all the time from people, they, they will come in and they're obese and they'll be like, okay, what product do I take in order to lose weight? And I said, well, let's start with this. Everyone should take ID Nutrition. Everyone needs a base foundation. That's where we start. And before we start a product, I need you to do two things for 30 days. If you can do these two things for 30 days and come back and see me, we can talk about products. And they're like, okay, what is that? I said, sleep eight hours a night, drink 100 ounces of water a day. Well, I can't do that. Then stay the way you are because you're not going to lose weight. You have to sleep and you have to hydrate. Most people in this country are dehydrated. 75% are dehydrated. They don't drink enough water. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Diet soda is a better choice than regular soda. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this. Has anyone ever seen this before? The Coke sinks and the Diet Coke floats? Physics say this. Okay, basic physics say this. If something weighs the same, designed the same, and you put it in the same environment, they should act the same. So why does the Diet Coke float and the, and the regular Coke sink? It's called dispersion of water. It's the density. Guess what? There's 40 grams of sugar in the Coke. There's aspartame in the Diet Coke. But guess what? Inside the body, they can't tell the difference. In fact, the aspartame is about 200 times sweeter than the sugar. So guess what, your body's going absolutely crazy inside and it's trying to get rid of all of that insulin that's now been pushing out through the pancreas. And guess what the easiest way for your body to get rid of all that insulin is? Sure. Eat more. Did you know people that drink Diet Coke are 40% more likely to be obese than regular Coke? 40% more likely. I always love it, you know, I, anybody go to fast food in the last 30 days? You liars. <laughs> You know, uh, here's the thing, the CDC just came out with a study, this one will scare you, it's about kids and health. In the last 30, in 30 day window, the average kid in this country has 27 meals for fast food. 27. 27 out of 30 days. If you figure three meals a day, 90 meals possible, 27 of them come from fast food. We're too busy to cook. Well guess what? 
Scotty and I were walking through the hallway last night. I almost broke my heart. Uh, there was this group of kids sitting there. It was way too late for these kids to be up. They should have been in sleep, you know, trying to get sleep so they can recover. Most kids need, you know, 10, 12 hours of sleep a night. And these kids were, I mean, big. They really were big. And they're maybe 10, 11 years old, Scotty, maybe. I mean, I'm sitting there looking at this and I'm like, man, there's, there's a problem here. But here's the issue, kids mirror the habits of their parents. So what do I do? What, what can I do in the platform that I have? I'll go into schools if they'll let me. Normally they'll let me in once. And then I talk to them about how ketchup and pizza sauce are not vegetables, so don't count. But guess what, our federal government does. And, and I talk to them about health, and I talk to them about choices, and I teach them the things that I'm going to show you today. And why do I do that? Because next time mom or dad puts something on the table, the kid has the information to ask the question. You know what that is. You know what that's doing to me. It's the conviction aspect of things. And if you feel convicted, guess what? I'm with you. Okay, remember, I didn't get to 307 pounds eating fruits and vegetables. I can tell you that. Okay? If you want to talk about midnight runs to the refrigerator when no one's watching, come talk to me. We, we can have that discussion. Okay, been there, done that. Got the t-shirts to prove it. But they're a lot bigger than the one I'm wearing now. Okay. But the biggest issue is this about diet soda. Don't be fooled that just because you're changing from one to the other, you've made a healthy choice. In fact, you've probably made a worse choice. It's actually doing more to you. So don't get fooled by that. Muscle weighs more than fat. Anyone ever hear that one before? Everyone, and in fact, about half the people in this room believe that statement. Uh-uh. Absolutely untrue. A pound is a pound. Galileo proved that. That's the picture in the background. Remember he had a pound of rocks, a pound of feathers, dropped them from the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa, and they hit the ground at the same time. A pound is a pound. It's called density. Muscle is more dense than fat. In fact, the greatest thing about fat is this. If you really want to talk to somebody, a pound of muscle will burn 7 to 10 calories a day. A pound of fat, 2 to 3 calories. Now, I will tell you the most common thing I hear, and I've heard it from my wife for years until I showed her this and then she changed her mind, uh, especially from women, is I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to get big. I don't want to look like a man. All right, so I worked out with Jim Wiederstrom on Monday, uh, probably one of the most fit human beings on the planet, especially for a female, works out all the time. She doesn't look big, bulky, and, and cute. She looks actually pretty good, okay, and she works out all the time. You want more muscle on your body. You want to build muscle. It will turn on your engine. It is going to build your metabolic rate. It is going to allow you to set and actually burn more calories. That's the fastest way to do it. The biggest issue is this. <clears throat> if you want to lose weight, you can reduce your diet. You can do all those various things. But the best way to lose weight fast is to actually put more muscle on. Easiest thing to do. Okay, so how about this one. We're from Texas. I've been traveling around the Northeast, so I have to be real careful what I say in, in you know, some aspects of things. I was in L.A. for two days. When I was in L.A., I actually had somebody ask me uh, what kind of meat I eat. I knew it was a trick question, and, and I told them whatever kind I killed. Uh, because I wanted the reaction that I got from it. <laughs> and I thought that they were going to be mortified, and they actually were, because uh, the hat they were wearing said something, there's a better choice than meat. So I figured we're going to start a discussion here. Uh, and since they wanted to set me up, I was going to shock them, and we had a nice discussion. I thought Jen was going to crawl under the table. But it was, uh, it was a nice thing, but the greatest thing is this. When you look at this plate, you're thinking, okay, there's where my protein is. That's where my vegetables are. I'm going to focus on this. If I get to that, then everything's great, right? Here's the problem. There's actually more protein in the broccoli than there is in the steak. Here's the other thing. Guess what? You can have 10 ounces of broccoli for 100 calories. You can have one ounce of steak for 100 calories. So common misconception that I have to eat meat and things like that in order to get my protein. Common misconception. Why do I show you this? I'm from Texas, obviously. The boots and the accent are real. I've been here my whole life, okay? It is one of those things that I want to make sure that everyone is educated that you don't have to do one thing to get something else. If you're on a system, you want to make sure you're getting enough protein, just educate yourself. There's a lot of things out there in the plant-based world that you can actually get. Let's talk about this one for a second. Statin drugs. Okay, statin drug real quick will lower your cholesterol. One in four people in this room are on a statin. So I'm not gonna ask you if you are. Chances are I've got at least six to 10 of you in this room that are on a statin drug right now. They were founded in 1987, but here's the best part. 15 years after they hit the market, and what if I show you this? I do not want you to stop taking your statin drug if you happen to be on one, because I'm about to scare you, okay? I'm just telling you now, I'm gonna scare you. I don't want you to stop taking your statin drug. I want you to be educated.
because a lot of people in this country are waiting on that next pharmaceutical to cure their issue. Okay, 15 years after they hit the market, the FDA came out with some new warnings. Statins cause liver damage, memory loss and confusion, type 2 diabetes, and muscle weakness. The statin actually causes type 2 diabetes. This was 15 years later. How did they come out with it 15 years later? Guess what? They had 15 years of history of what the statins were doing to people. We still want to wait on a pharmaceutical drug to help us with our weight loss? Now, Health Canada gets it right. Because you know what a statin really does? Does anybody have any idea what statins really do beyond just level out and lower the cholesterol? They reduce or eliminate the body's ability to process CoQ10. Okay, CoQ10 is a natural supplement that your body creates, and guess what its purpose is? Heart health. It actually keeps your heart healthy. If your body cannot produce CoQ10, guess what that means? You've increased your chances of having a heart attack. Why are you taking cholesterol medications? Because you don't want a heart attack. You're taking something to prevent something that's actually going to cause the thing that it was designed to prevent. In fact, Health Canada did this. They said, you know what, we're just going to go straight to the point because, you know, we're straightforward. Could lead to impaired cardiac function in patients with borderline congestive heart failure. In other words, if you take a statin, it will actually cause a heart attack if you already have borderline congestive heart failure. Everyone catch that? Everyone understand that? Because here's the thing, what they don't tell you about statins, there's two types of LDL. LDL is the bad cholesterol. One of them is a nice fluffy thing that actually goes in and actually does a lot of good things. The other one is the bad one, it's the dense. But HDL, okay, that's the other form, that's the good cholesterol. It's the only known substance we have that actually goes in and cleans out the arteries. But guess what, that statin stops production of both. So what happens to those arteries when they're clogged up? They calcify. You've, you've literally eliminated your body's ability to produce CoQ10, which is what's needed for heart health, and the body's ability to actually clean out the issues that you have. Much better choice, diet and exercise. Much better choice. But we created this wonderful thing, and now we have all of the issues that we have with it. All right, so let's get this one. Which one's healthier? Pineapple or Oreo cookies? Now see, at this point, some of you in this room are thinking, man, I, I want to say pineapple, but I bet you it's the Oreos because it's tricked us all day. It's actually the pineapple, okay? Some things you know you actually know, okay? Some things you know you actually know. But I will tell you this about Oreo cookies. You know those little health food bars that you see in the store that are right next to the Oreo cookies that moms grab that instead of the Oreos because it's a better choice because it has a nice packaging on the front. It has nice fresh fruits right on the front of that package. It's all sugar alcohol. All sugar. There's no fruit in those bars. In fact, the better choice is actually the Oreos because at least it has some fiber in it. So the reason why I show you this is because there's a lot of information, a lot of misinformation out there that you have to educate yourself. Now, what does this have to do with Ideolite products? Here's the best thing. All of the stuff that you've seen today and a lot more go into every one of our thought processes when we create something. We know all of these issues. We know what's going on. We're going to give you the information. We're going to educate you, and it goes into everything that we build and why we build them. There's too much confusion out there. You don't know who to listen to. You don't know what information I can rely on. My favorite now is everyone goes and they're going to Google it, and they go to where? A lot of the times, Wikipedia. Does anyone know who actually creates the information on Wikipedia? Everybody else. We rely on everybody else to verify the information that everybody else puts on it. I could go create a Wikipedia page right now that said whatever I wanted to. But yet we rely on Wikipedia for a lot of our health information. Or better yet, we go to WebMD and we self-diagnose all kinds of things that we have. <laughs> Did you know that every dollar spent by a pharmaceutical company in advertising increases their sales by $4.2? Every dollar spent increases their sales by $4.2. Everyone noticed the Super Bowl this last year with every other commercial seemed like it was a pharmaceutical commercial? You know why? WebMD. No longer do we have a society where we go to the doctor and the doctor tells us what we need. We go to the doctor and tell the doctor what we want. And the doctor writes the script. That's what happens. That's what's going on. Okay. So, why are we different? What makes us different? What about our products is different? Let's start here. Unmatched quality control. You know, in this country, the average to get a product to market is three to six weeks in this industry. Three to six weeks. That means from concept to shelf, three to six weeks. 
Doesn't seem like a long time, does it? And the reason is, is because simply there's not a lot of regulation. There's not a lot of anything to get the product to the market. But the one thing that everyone needs to stop saying, because I see this all the time, that the supplement market is not regulated by the FDA, it absolutely is after the product is on the market. Okay? The difference between us and pharmaceuticals is pharmaceuticals, they regulate before it gets to the market. We can talk about statins because they did a great job regulating that. Or we can talk about what happens in the food supply because supplements are considered a food, they regulate after it hits the market. So there is regulation there. So if you put out there that you know we don't regulate, absolutely untrue, they do. But what we do in, in quality control at ID Life is a little bit different. I was a lawyer for 20 years, now I'm recovering. Uh, I tell people that all the time because I actually saw the light. But what I did do is I brought a lot of the things that I did in law over to this business. So here's how we do quality control real quick. This is to give you some information that you may or may not otherwise know. Raw material manufacturers that do business with ID Life have to go through blind inspections and subject themselves to me jumping on a plane whenever I want, walking in the front door and let me see whatever I want to see. I promise you, you can ask God, if I come in to see you, it's not a pleasant experience because I'm gonna look at everything, just who I am and what I do. But if you wanna do business with us, you have to agree to that. Now, when your raw materials hit our product manufacturers, guess what, they go into quarantine. Why do they go into quarantine? Because we're gonna test them. We're gonna test them for heavy metals, we're gonna test them for pesticides, we're gonna test them through all of the various tests that the good manufacturing practices require. On top of that, we're also gonna have them verified by an outside lab as well. So not only the manufacturer, but also an outside lab and then they're gonna give me the certificate analysis to say everything is exactly what it says it was, 